Greetings, friends around the world. Here I am, Alexander Sashavelich. Nice to talk to you once again. And I'm making this, in a sense, out of order uh, address to you because something has happened tonight. Uh, something very interesting that was published in the in the uh, very popular and perhaps the most popular uh, Jewish newspaper, the Jerusalem Post. Namely, uh, it was uh, Wednesday night, Wednesday evening. Now it's past over over midnight past midnight here in Serbia I was working on my library I was working on uh, on, on, on on my indexation and I was working on the catalog of my library the hope of Israel the library which is very unique in the whole world because it does contain the historical background of the house of Israel it does contain many books on biblical history which is the topic of this channel so uh, is the biblical history about the people of god the house of israel throughout the ages uh, their origin uh, their migrations their scattering the losing of their identity their modern identity etc etc and as i was working through i realized that the uh, the uh, platinum jubilee of the queen elizabeth is a very important event that something that i should that is going on that was going on this month and i should that's something i should pay some attention to and i will in my future addresses to you it will be about the origin of the british monarchy or more concretely the origin of the british throne but uh, as i was working tonight on my working on with uh, arranging my books in in the library uh, as we are going to celebrate the day of my library on uh, basically on july the 16th as i was working on it i got a notification from the jerusalem post and the headlines was just caught my attention very quickly. The headline says, um, Israel makes dramatic upgrades to military plans to attack Israel. So this was, this happened on, on June the 8th, on Wednesday night. And it was published on June the 8th, uh, uh, of this year in, uh, in the afternoon, but I got the notification only, only, as I said, tonight. And, uh, it's by Amir Bohot. As I can see from the name of the uh, name of the journalist, and I'm going to write now. I'm going to right now read you an excerpt from this article, and then I'll explain to you why is this so relevant and important to pay attention to. So here is the quote: In face of Iran's continued development of a nuclear capability, the Israeli Air Force has developed a new capability to be able to fly its F-35 stealth fighter jets from Israel to the Islamic Republic without requiring mid-air refueling. The development is a boost to IIF capabilities and comes as the Israeli military has upped its preparations for a future strike against Iran's nuclear capability. End of the quote. So that's, those are the couple of first uh, uh, paragraphs in this article. The article then continues to explain other things and you can read it for yourself if you wish. It is online. Again, it's in Jerusalem Post. It's published on June the 8th and the, uh, the title is Israel makes dramatic upgrades to military plans to attack Iran. Now what, what, what caught my attention was, was uh, as the Israeli military has upped its preparations for a future strike against Iran's nuclear capabilities. As you know, my dear friends, as you know, for years, the Iranian regime has threatened to wipe uh, the state of Israel off the world map. So uh, the state of Israel does feel very much threatened by Iran. At the same time, you might remember that the former U.S. President Donald Trump withdrew from the Iranian uh, nuclear deal and then came with the ascension of the uh, fraudulent president who, who, who won by fraud elections, Joseph Biden. With his ascension to the power, uh, this policy was reversed and the America returned to Israel nuclear uh, deal with Iran. Iran has been slowly but surely upgrading its and developing its nuclear capability, which of course was alarming to the Jewish state and the state of Israel because of the uh, continual and steady threats that this state, the Iranian Republic, the, the Islamic Republic of Iran made against the state of Israel. And therefore, of course, being alarmed by all of this, as you can see, the Israeli Air Force has just developed now a new capability. 
Now, why would they develop a new capability unless they plan to make, as it says, a future strike against Iran's nuclear capabilities? Well, very obviously, they're upgrading themselves because they're expecting to disable, actually, Israelis, nu uh, uh, Iran's, I'm sorry, Iran's nuclear capabilities. So that's number one. Number two. For some time we've been watching the Middle East. The Middle East has been traditionally termed the powder cake of the world. And uh, because there are three religions there uh, uh, involved when it comes to uh, State of Israel, well, there are three world religions involved uh, related to the uh, city of Jerusalem, etc., etc. There's been always this uh, fear for decades uh, among many nations that the conflict, religious possible conflicts in the Middle East may be the trigger, may trigger off conflicts around the world and may just drag in the world into the world conflict. Well, you see, we have been watching the, uh, we, as I say, we, I mean the, my fellow believers, my friend Dr. Bob Thiel, I mean the continuing Church of God and various members uh, and various of those who watch the, uh, who are members of whatever organization but watch closely the world events. Uh, but some of us have been watching the Middle East for a while and uh, we realize that Dr. Bob Thiel has even written a, a few a uh, few times about the coming future attack of Israel against the Iran. Now, why is this important? Well, it is important because such an attack will be unilateral. Obviously, the American administration, headed by Joseph Biden, or perhaps somebody else in his stead, like, I, for example, if he gets, if he gets uh, unable to lead the country due to his health, but uh, him or his successor, Kamala Harris, certainly will not be on Israel's side. And they will certainly not approve any attack of Israel against Iran. So therefore, it will be a unilateral attack of Israel against Iran, which would make Europeans very unhappy because the European foreign policy is very much anti-Israeli and anti-Jewish. As you know, the United Nations as a world body is also very much anti-Jewish and anti-Israeli. So the whole world would get very concerned and the whole world would be, will be very upset about this action. Now, of course, Israel will have to defend its own interests and uh, in their best interest they will have to attack Iran and disable their nuclear capabilities and disable them from possible destruction of the state of Israel, which is quite understandable from the Jewish point of view, of course. But of course the world being very anti-Semitic and anti-Jewish, the world is going to react with much fear, with uh, probably very huge anti-Israeli rhetoric. Please keep in mind also that uh, Iran is a uh, uh, Islamic state, so the Islamic world will be up in arms, uh, the European Europeans will be up in arms, the Americans will be kind of weakened and sidelined, just like what we can see from the from the current American administration being led by this, as I said, uh, uh, a president who won the elections by fraud. So in any case, American <laughs> American foreign policy has been already discredited as well as their internal policy because of these fraudulent elections anyway. So therefore, that will be a, a moment, a historical moment after the uh, nuclear attack of Israel against Iran for Europe to step in. Because Europeans, led by Germans, have wanted for decades to actually, or have secretly desired for decades, to get involved in the Middle East and become the main factor and push out the American, the Americans, and push out the American interests. So this will be the, the opportune moment for them. And then we come to the next very important element into the prophecy. Uh, the world will be very concerned and in fear of nuclear uh, worldwide conflict. But thankfully it will not happen because, and this is very important, brethren, because biblical history is also a history of the future. So sometimes on this channel, very often you'll hear the news from the future. So this is the news from the future. The Europeans will most likely, not most likely, but certainly will get involved, but they will most likely send a peace broker, and the identity of this peace broker is important. They will most likely send the uh, ex-German uh, economic and, and, and defense minister, Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg. The name you've heard quite often in uh, my recent addresses and my recent messages to you, and the name that you should remember. Now, why should you remember it? Well, because, uh, because you should remember because some of us have been led by God to really watch that person. Uh, namely, my friend Bob Thiel was the one who actually, based on various factors, have paid attention and his attention was drawn to this person, Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg. 
and uh, even before Carter de Gutenberg was uh, uh, ousted as a mem- uh, as a minister because of plagiarism and his plagiarite former plagiarite doctorate dissertation. He's a new doctor now. He's a doctor of philosophy, by the way. Uh, so uh, before he was ousted, before he went into exile to America, Bob Till indeed uh, wrote a few articles about him, and he was intending to write a book about him. Uh, in the meantime, uh, some of those things that he uh, wrote about this man, but based on the Bible prophecy, concretely on uh, on Daniel chapter 11, uh, verses will be 31 through 44, uh, he wrote about some... Uh, prophetic events uh, related to the biography which will be so caught in plagiarism and exiled, biography of this person and those things came to pass in the meantime as time goes on uh, this man even though he was ousted from the post has been gaining some popularity it was this last year 5th of December 19, uh, 2021 on the very birthday of Carl Theodor zu Gutenberg, there was a very excellent article saying that there is a bright future awaiting that man. Well, brethren, I'm not sure that the author of the article realized what he said, but I do realize what he said. Because the bright future of this man will be most likely that he will be indeed, he will be indeed, uh, the peace broker sent by a European super state, the United States of Europe, to the Middle East to broker peace between the uh, Iran, and, and the Jewish state and between the Jews and the Arabs so uh, he'll broker that peace deal and according to Daniel chapter 11 the peace deal will be brokered and will be signed for 7 years then there is a prophecy that, that he himself would break that peace deal in the middle of that uh, in the middle of that period so after 3.5 years and then how he'll break it is described in the gospels the occupation of the state of Israel, the occupation of Jerusalem, European armies surrounding, when you see the Jerusalem surrounded by armies, know that it's the time, Jesus Christ said. But those are now the distant future. I am just want to focus you on this near future. So, the uh, continual threat by the Islamic Republic of Iran against Israel is going to lead us, obviously, to the Israeli unilateral, without approval of American administration, and much less of European administration, uh, and even more, even less uh, approval of United Nations Security Council, uh, is going to lead the, uh, so it, it's going to lead Israel to make a unilateral attack against Iran without approval of any world body. Uh, the nuclear attack, of course, will disable Iran, but it will cause huge upheaval in the world and fear of a world nuclear conflict. So, Europe is going, the European, the United States of Europe are going to uh, prevent this by sending their peace broker, who we can very much say will be most likely, according to what we see and according to the prophecies that we already passed, that we saw were true and that we interp- interpreted them well. That man will be Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg, who will be sent as the peace broker. He is going to uh, negotiate with between the, with the Arab world and, of course, with the Jewish state, and he is going to come up with a peace deal. It will be signed for seven years. What is going to happen as the result? Uh, Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg will be celebrated around the world as a messiah who rescued the world from possible nuclear. Uh, world conflict and he's going to be terribly celebrating his popularity is going to rise to great heights and as a result he is going to become the head of the European super state and here when that happens that means that we will get we'll get the king of the north as prophesied in Daniel 11 we'll get the first beast as prophesied in Revelation chapter 13 and we will get the man of sin the son of perdition, as prophesied in Second Thessalonians chapter two, and the First Thessalonians, the book of First Thessalonians, written by Paul, uh, basically finishes with the uh, admonition that when they say the world peace, peace, then sudden destruction will come to them. So he is going to make peace, 
and the whole world will be celebrating that peace and celebrating him and the whole world will be delighted peace 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 you know they'll be saying oh peace in the world but then the sudden destruction of three and a half years because in a half in the middle of that peace deal he's going to break it as it says in daniel chapter 11 then so therefore uh, while the world will be celebrating and saying peace peace then sudden destruction will come because after three and a half years Basically, the Great Tribulation prophesied in the Bible, confer, well, called Jacob's Trouble by Jeremiah chapter 30, called also the Great Tribulation by Jesus Christ and his apostles in the Gospels, that Great Tribulation is going to happen. It will be, the, as Jesus Christ said, the most horrible event of all events in world history. But those events, those three and a half years prior to his return, those three and a half years, the most horrible ones, will lead to his return and he will finally come to rescue this dying humankind from their own terrible, satanic and wrong ways. Uh, once he becomes the European dictator, Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg is going to fulfill some other Bible prophecies, but that's now a bit more distant future, so I'm not going to, fo I'm not going to draw your attention to those events. We'll talk about them when the time comes the time will come when the peace discussions will be underway uh, between uh, the Arabs and the Jews and then when those discussions will be underway I'll make sure to address you once again to remind you once again of this message now to remind you once again uh, what will the outcome of those peace talks be and the outcome will be the peace deal of Daniel 11 and then the outcome will be that the Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg will become the European president well he'll be more dictator rather than president but that's now another story when those discussions happen when the peace talks happen after the I Israeli attack against Iran which is most likely I'm coming to realize I know you'll say this is all speculation yes I agree with you, it's a speculation, but we have speculated this for a long time, and what leads me to uh, uh, to believe now more and more that this speculation will be true is this very passage I've just read to you from Jerusalem Post. It says, the development is a boost to IIF, Israeli Air, Air Force, capabilities and comes as the Israeli military has upped its preparations for a future strike against Iran's nuclear capabilities. So they're getting ready, they're preparing themselves for the future strike. So therefore, why would they do that unless they plan to make it? Because they already realize that Iran is not going to stop developing its nuclear capabilities and they realize, well, America is not really standing on our side anymore. We cannot count much on Europe, let much less on United Nations Security Council, who doesn't really care. So we'll just make a unilateral attack and just resolve problems are that way. And then, uh, you know, we'll prevent Iran from possibly destroying us by a nuclear weapon. So that's all reasonable to suppose. And therefore, I, I do believe that uh, now I do believe more and more that it might happen and it will, it will happen that way. So, once again, what is ahead of us? I've been telling you at various occasions, brethren, not, and friends, not to <coughs> get upset about the conflict in Russia, that is in Ukraine, I want to say, conflict in Ukraine, not to get kind of sidelined by conflict here, there, and anywhere. No, those are not the conflicts. And possible conflict between North Korea and, and America, possible conflict between in Taiwan. No, brethren, that's in France. Those are not the main essential events. I told you, the eyes of the God are on his land. And his land is not in America, not in Australia, not in Serbia, not in Ukraine. It is in the Middle East. So we are to be the only real fear, the real essential fear of a world conflict would be events in the Middle East. And here is now, right now, as I've just seen several hours ago, before I addressed you, here's the new development. Israeli military has upped its preparation for a future strike against Iran. All right. So, and of course, the land of Israel, state of Israel is God's land. And according to it, his uh, covenant with Abraham, he, God, gave uh, to Abraham's children, Abraham's descendants, and Jews are part of his descendants. They're one of the 12 tribes of Israel. He gave to those descendants the land, and therefore the land, you know, the, his descendants, Abraham's descendants, are right there in the land. So, the eyes of God are fixed on that land, and so is our God, our eyes. 
those of us who understand the Bible and the Bible prophecies and the Bible history. So, this is now the latest development. Is Israeli military is preparing for a future strike against Iran's nuclear capabilities. And since nobody is out there now, well, Trump was the last one, the only one who, who withdrew from the, from the uh, nuclear deal with Iran. But since the United States administration has returned to that deal, since nobody out there seems to be capable or willing to stop Iran from its nuclear, nuclear development, well, Israel is going to take a unilateral action and make an end to it, which will cause again the great upheaval and great concern in the world. And here is the opportune moment. Europe is going to step in uh, and basically sideline the American influence. And it's very easy to do <laughs> with the current American administration. And the Europeans are going to send their peace broker. Oh, what a surprise. It will cut her to Gutenberg. Uh, uh, and if not him, somebody else will be. Who else will be? He'll be the next king of the north and the next European president and the coming European dictator. But most likely, according to what we could see, and uh, the bright future, as that article said in German, bright future waits Karl Theodor to Gutenberg. Yes, his bright future most likely will be. He'll be a peace broker. He'll gain a worldwide popularity and he will be elected a new European president. He'll be a dictator and... Uh, then on that position and from that position he's going to fulfill some other Bible prophecies and make some more biblical history. But we are going to talk about that when once the peace talks in the Middle East start and once Europe sends him as their peace broker. I thought this is very important for all you to understand because uh, various people out there seem to be confused about the order of prophesied events. I do understand that confusion uh, because I myself have had some... Uh, misunderstandings in the past but those misunderstandings have been cleared up more and more in most recent years as I've been watching the world news and following what uh, following the world events Jesus Christ said watch and pray that you'll be accounted worthy to escape all these things that are about to come upon the world yes so I'm watching and I'm praying and I'm following the news along with my friends and I need it's I feel it's my ob obligation and 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 uh, my moral obligation to all of you to warn you in time uh, on time and in time when it is relevant and actual to warn you about what is going to happen so right now at this moment uh, the israeli military is being prepared for a for a future I'm, I'm i'm quoting for a future strike against iran's nuclear capabilities so that's now right ahead of us that will be the most upsetting world event and uh, it's going to, again, it is going to lead to peace discussions. When those peace discussions come, and when Europe sends its broker to, uh, uh, to negotiate such peace deal, then I'll remind you at that time that the peace broker will become the European dictator, and I'll then remind you what the Bible prophecies tells about him and what he will accomplish uh, from that point on, from the point of his presidency on. So, my dear friends, you've been now hearing some biblical history in the future, some future biblical history. Stay tuned. All of these events are not to really upset us because all of these events are a proof that Jesus Christ's return is around the corner. Jesus Christ is allowing all of this and God the Father is allowing all of this so that we would be getting ready, that we would be repenting of our sins, cleansing our lives, bringing our lives in line with God's law and God's government, because his government is expressed through his law. And the true faith is the faith uh, which brings uh, good works, as James said. We are not keeping God's law to be saved. We keep God's law out of love for God. And in his huge love, God has, he see, give, has given us this tremendous understanding of the prophesied events. We have more understanding than any generations before us. We have more understanding of what is going to happen soon than any, any generation before us, dear friends. And we need to indeed, we need to indeed uh, appreciate that. We need to appreciate that more and more because, again, Jesus Christ's return is around the corner. Because once 
the new European dictator brokers this deal, he's going to uh, break it in the middle. So he's going to break it after three and a half years. And then we'll have three and a half years of great tribulation, the day of the Lord, before the Lord finally uh, returns to this earth. And that is why we have to watch all of this. That's why it is important to stay tuned. That's why it is important to watch and pray always that we be accounted worthy to escape these horrible things. So therefore, again, we need to be aware what is ahead of us. Right now we see Israelis preparing for a future attack against Iran's nuclear capabilities. Yes, it's very possible, and yes, we will be seeing it with our own eyes. But once again, take this as the warning of Jesus Christ. And the warning is, I'm coming soon, and my reward is coming with me to give to everyone according to their deeds, and according to their works. That's what he says in Revelation. So repent now, turn to God, understand that behind all of these main events, it's God and with his plan to bring all of this chaotic system, not the world, but the system, this Babylonian, spiritual Babylonian chaotic system to an end and to usher in his glorious kingdom of God. Until next time, uh, thank you for your attention and until next time, uh, goodbye friends, be well, be healthy and watch and pray always.